class of petty cash book very well so let's start today's class and we will start our class from the advantages of the impress system so in the previous class you might have understood uh, we have discussed the, the meaning of petty cash book and also the impress system what do you mean by the impress system under impress system let us revise first under impress system the cashier has been paid the cashier or the petty cashier has been paid an amount of like a fixed amount in the starting of the month for taking out for paying off all those expenses that are under that uh, that are for that month okay so pay, uh, under your impress system okay sorry we got interrupted so under the impress system what does what does this do the in the under the impress system the main cashier pays the petty cashier a small amount of money that he has to uh, he he will keep it for paying off all those small small expenses for that month okay so that is your impress system the money will be paid first and he will take from that money he will he is going to pay all those small small expenses okay so let's uh, look upon the advantages of the impress system in the previous class we did the essentials of an impress system that what should be done under a good impress system so let's see what are the advantages of this kind of system control over misappropriation so first advantage is control over misappropriation uh, since the impress the sum is small it does not provide a temptation either to the petty cashier or to other staff to misappropriate that means since the amount given to him is very low let's say maximum 5000 or 8000 are given to him or if it is a very large organization then it will be he will be paid like 20000 maximum so that 20000 is given to him and he will like pay off, pay off all those expenses from that 20000 so like he is getting also salary same amount of salary he might be getting so that means he does not have anything like he will not run away with that money with that money because he is getting the salary on time so in this system since the payment made to him is very small amount as compared to his salary or whatever his income is so he is not going to take miss he is not going to take any like um, unlawful thing okay he will not run away with the money that because he is not going to get any benefit out of it he will be paid very small amounts so that amount is not going to benefit him for long time if he would be paid like 1 lakh per month for a month expense then it may lure him it may like feel like that yes i can run away with this money and i can make my own something something and i will be very rich no because he has been paid only 10,000 or 15,000 a month that is I am saying for the large organization for small organization he might be paid only 5,000 what will he do by, 5, by taking 5,000 that's not going to benefit him so that's why it is a proper control over the misappropriation no other staff or no other employees will be like interested in, uh, in taking those money and run away ok so it is a control on them next is control over petty expenses since they have paid 5000 to the person that you take this 5000 and you pay off all the expenses for this month from this 5000 so since this has been given to him so he has to answer all those expenses right since he is paying all those amounts so he will be answerable to all those expenses whatever he is paying out so for that he will be like controlling those expenses he will be like uh, that let me uh, spend some less amount so that we, I am able to pay out all the expenses within this given limit. So he will be controlling all the small small expenses. So petty expenses are kept within the limits of impress since the petty cashier can never spend more than the available petty cash pitten. Right? He has been given 5000 so he has to take 5000 and um, like survive the whole month for the firm. Not for him. That is not for him. He will be paid salary for that but he has to survive all those expenses for the firm right so for that he will be like his mind will be set that yes i have this 5000 and i have to spend it wisely so that way the petty expenses will be get will get control next is control exercise by the main cashier 
so that control is exercised by whom the main cashier he will be paying the impressed amount to the petty cashier so the petty cashier will be like yes uh, the, uh, my sir is paying me 5000 and i have to look after this i can't pay more than this right so main cashier keeps a close watch on the amount refunded to the patient petty cashier time to time so main cashier will check all the receipts to verify whether the petty cashier is like doing the right thing or not so he will check all the amount paid by him all the receipt so he will be checking on him time to time while repaying him so hence extra vacancy if any will be revealed so if he have paid like he uh, the expenses were for 500 and he has paid 1000 if he shows like this then he will be caught at that moment only so it has been controlled he has been controlled by the main cashier so that he doesn't do any fraudulent activities he doesn't do any frauds lesser chances of misuse of cash by petty cashier so there is very less chances of misuse of cash because the cash is very low there is very less amount of cash at any time the amount of cash in hand plus the total value of vouchers which have not been reimbursed must equal to the interest amount so whatever the cash he has paid or whatever is going to be paid by him all those should be added and it should be checked with the impressed amount so he can't he can't misuse those amount that he is receiving by the main cashier from the main cashier existence of this simple check reduces the chances of misuse of cash by the petty cashier so since this simple check is exist simple says uh, check is existing right that uh, the main cashier keeps on checking the uh, vouchers the receipts the, uh, that the petty cashier issues so all those things he will be keep uh, he will keep on checking so this will uh, this will make what the petty cashier to be very conscious about whatever he is paying he will take the receipt of it okay so that will be like that will help in lesser chance of misuse of the cash received by him next is advantages to petty cashier what are the advantages faced by the petty cashier impress system is advantages to petty cashier also because the, he is liable to to account for money spent can never be exceed the impressed amount so whatever the impressed amount he has been given to him it will the, the expenses will not exceed the impressed amount yes sometimes it can exceed but that is very less number of chances or let's say he has been given 6000 then there will be like 6050 rupees 6100 rupees the 100 or 50 rupees difference or hardly 200 rupees of 300 rupees difference not more than that so he has no liability for that right so he don't have to like worry about it that no i have to pay much more than that how will i how will i ask money from this sir from our sir time to time again and again right so he doesn't need to ask money from his the uh, main cashier again and again because he has been paid the amount after the calculations after the previous calculation so moreover since his accounts are checked at regular intervals say weekly or monthly he is not required to account for transactions which occur in the far distant past so since since his uh, accounts are checked weekly or once in a two weeks if his accounts are keep on checked then that means what he doesn't have to maintain all the vouchers from all the previous 2 3 months he just have to have this last one month voucher or last one week or two weeks voucher that will help that will help him because in the the main cashier doesn't have that much of time that he will keep on checking all those of one month like he will keep on checking regularly in a week so by by the end of one week he will check okay this is matching then this is correct he has not done any fraud and in the next week again he will check for the next week only or for 15 days he will check for 15 days and he will say okay throw this receipt now or keep this receipt aside now let's start a fresh right so he doesn't have to maintain all the receipts he just have to receive he has to take some amount of receipt for for which period it needs to be checked so that is very advantage for uh, advantages for petty cashier one is he doesn't have the liability he will not have to ask the money for again and again because he will be re- reimbursed by the main cashier because the main cashier has the all the details second he doesn't have to keep all the records for all the previous months thus the period that has not been checked that has not been checked by the 
petty cashier, uh, the main cashier, it will be checked. So for that period only, he will keep the receipts with him. These are the advantages of the imprint system. Now let's see, what are the advantages of petty cashier? Okay, saving of time and efforts of chief cashier. So by appointing a petty cashier, it reduces the burden of the main cashier right because all those small small expenses the main cashier doesn't need to look at, around at it so he has many plenty of time for looking at the bigger expenses so he can plan according to that or he can like he can uh, calculate those things very easily so the petty cashier for appointing petty cashier the, since the petty cashier has been appointed so the cash uh, the main cashier uh, burden is reduced so as petty cashier handles the work of making all petty expenses and recording them as well a lot of time and energy of the main cashier is saved because half of the work is done by the petty cashier so he is to record only the total of such expenses and that too only once at the end of each month so the petty cashier has to record only once at the end of each month next is easiness in posting since the expenses are added daily expenses are added so he will like group it all like cartage today i have paid 40 next day i have paid 50 next day 60 all this will be total then this will be entered to the cash book or to the journal entry right so it is very easy to post from that petty cashier only the total of each head of expense each head of expense is posted into the ledger as such a lot of space is saved in the posting becomes very convenient since all the small small expenses are grouped together so they will take the grouped amount total amount and they will post it to the ledger so it saves a lot of time okay next is easiness is easiness in preparing the cash book now as the number of small payments in every business is quite large very small small payments are very large okay there are a large number of transactions takes place in a large business in every day not only in large business in the, on on the small business also the number of transactions are very large so for that since the small payments are very large and these are recorded in the petty cash book itself the main cash book is not overburdened and can be more easily total so since the main cash book is not overburdened half of the expenses small small expenses they are been grouped together by the petty cashier in another petty cash book in another cash book so the main cash book doesn't get overburdened or doesn't get overcrowded with lot of transaction like from if there are 100 transactions of 100 transaction in the business out of this 60 may be of petty cash book petty cash book so the remaining 40 transactions they can adjust it in the cash book easily so this 60 will be again grouped in 30 let's say or 20 so that becomes very easy to be posted into the ledger so these are very helpful so it is not overbranded and cannot be and can be very easily total and the balance cd can be easily uh, calculated next is control on petty expenses that we have already studied the main cashier keeps checking the petty cash book from time to time and a proper check is put on any unnecessary expenditure so the main cashier always keeps a check on all the expenses paid out by the petty cashier once in a week so that will work he will keep a proper check if the, he uh, if he sees that that this expenditure is not to be made then he will see and he will just calculate it so he will be like why mm. have you paid this amount this was not required to be paid so all these things he can take a control on petty expenses lesser chance of fraud since the petty cashier has been paid a less amount of money for the whole month so he will be like not uh, taking chances of doing fraud okay so and the, he has to obtain a uh, regular records he has to keep all the vouchers he has to keep all the receipts for proof so that means there are very less chances of fraud. Petty cashier obtains a receipt of every payment made by him and keeps a proper record of them. So he has to record all these things. The receipts are duly signed by the main cashier. So all the receipts are mainly signed by the cashier while 
reimbursing the amount to the petty cashier so when he is being reimbursed like uh, at the end of the month he has used all this money so now he will take all this receipt to the main cashier and he will give it to him and say that uh, please sign this receipt and please reimburse the amount so the petty the main cashier will total it and see whether his uh, total amount and whether the cash in hand are matching or not then he will again reimburse the amount so that means there are very less chances of fraud as such it minimizes the chances of fraud simple method in the maintenance of petty cash book does not require any specialized knowledge of accounting it does not require any specialized knowledge like you have to debit you have to credit these things doesn't matter in petty cash book it is very easy to maintain it can be maintained by any of the person who is very less educated or very less he has studied so these are the advantages of petty cash book now let's see the accounting procedure of petty cash book petty cash book is prepared like a simple cash book so it is prepared like a simple cash book that is simple column cash book having the debit and the credit sides so it it also has the debit side and credit side just there is a difference in it amount received from the head cashier is recorded on the debit side so the amount let's say interest amount is 5000 we will just add it here 5000 okay and then cash book folio means whatever page number of cash book you will be recording this transaction to that page number you will add here then date you have particulars you have voucher number you have whatever total payments you have made for each of the transaction these things you have to do so total payments you have made 2000 let's say from 2000 1000 is for courier and 1000 is for wages you will add like this it's very easy okay so the payments are recorded in the credit side so all the payments are like categorized so it is very easy to post on the payment credit side a separate column is provided for each class of most common expenses whatever the most common expenses they are taken on a column and they are been paid and the extra that is that doesn't come under each column it will come under this miscellaneous expenses it will come under this miscellaneous expenses it is like postage and courier whatever the postage charge stamp charge courier charge always all will be in this then wages whatever the small small wages are paid to the workers then conveyance where whatever communication whatever uh, taxi fare or um, whatever the fare is there that will be under this conveyance cartage charge stationery then except all this thing all this will come under your miscellaneous expenses okay so on the payment side a separate column is provided for each class of most expense common expenses then these are taken as together under your ledger account okay number of columns depend upon the number of uh, upon the nature and need of the particular business whatever particular business is carried upon whatever uh, like um, expenses he has every month based on that there will be columns in this credit side a business of small size needs lesser number of column where a business of Large size will need more columns. Those expenses that are not entered in any separate column are entered in a column designated as miscellaneous expenses. So those expenses that can't be taken under this each and every column, this will come under your miscellaneous expenses. Okay. So this is the specimen of petty cash book. On the debit side, you have amount received that is the interest amount. that is your impressed amount then this cash book folio is the page number of cash book this is page number then you have date particulars whatever the particulars are there then voucher number because the petty cashier has to maintain the voucher number all the vouchers then total payments whatever payments you are paying all this will be entered here and what if the, it is under this postage then it will be posted here also if it is under these postages then this will be again postages here okay so these are the particulars these are the specimen of petty cash book now see here are your petty cash book one question is there regarding petty cash book let's do this one you will be more clear about it let's do this 
this side we will be have having amount received this side okay next what you have next it will be cash book folio next you have cash book folio next you have date then particulars then voucher number then total payments total payments then whatever it is what are there stationery wages then miscellaneous under miscellaneous all this will become okay fare will be under conveyance postal so let's say postage and courier let's take it here also okay let's continue it here also so this will be postal and courier then it will be stationery whatever it is write out then this will be wages then what do you have conveyance other postage conveyance then stationery we have then then we will be having like miscellaneous or let's do it this way let's do it this way let's continue it here and from this side let's continue it whatever the things were postage stationery let's make it more small this is cash book folio we will remember okay this is date then you have particulars amount received then this is cash book folio cash book folio then date then particulars this is a very uh, long one okay next you have voucher number next you have total payments next you have postage or courier charges next you have stationery next you have what are the things conveyance and what are the other things miscellaneous okay first is july 1 2022 received 10000 from the cashier so 2022 july first july okay we will write date in this color 2022 july 1 okay so 10000 received particulars will be amount received 
or you can say to bank or to cash next purchase stationery okay purchased stationery purchased stationery this is first then stationery purchased stationery this one was third payment this one is payment right so 800 in total payment 800 will be there next in the next it is stationery so it will come under stationery next paid for wages so wages paid what is the date 6 another charity ok so wages paid how much is it 500 wages paid 500 next charity 300 wages paid will come under your wages oh wages we missed out so let's draw one more line wages and this is miscellaneous ok so wages paid 500 it will come under wages then charity will come under miscellaneous we don't have any other column for charity next we have purchase so this is, this is also miscellaneous this is for 7 so purchased so ok how much is the amount 800 so we will put it under miscellaneous ok one more thing is here cartage so cartage let's make it here so this is very lengthy one you have to make many of the things like this is cartage cartage amount is 200 so cartage it is 200 next pay postal expenses postal come under this postage so next is 12 po paid postal expenses what is the amount you are paying 600 ok soap will come here cartage was what was the amount of cartage it was 200 ok here it was newspaper bill also so uh, this will be your newspaper bill newspaper bill newspaper bill paid 700 it will come under your stationery let's say next we have paid postal expenses 600 it will come under your postage again next you have ok this one we missed out on date 9 we missed out this one let's write first this one so it was for 9 paid taxi fare and another is cartage ok so cartage what is the amount paid taxi fare is newspaper bill was 700 we added it then taxi fare was 800 and cartage was 200 ok so taxi fare will be under conveyance conveyance means whatever the vehicle charge transportation charge cartage it will come under cartage 200 rupees ok next we have on July on July uh, 12 postal expenses paid postal expenses postal expenses 600 so we will add 600 here then postage under postage we will add 600 did you get it all the amount will appear in this payment section then it will get segregated to other other columns ok next is paid post charges and wages on 25 so paid speed post charges and wages ok speed post charges amount is 400 wages amount is 600 speed post will come under postage 
then wages charge will be coming under your wages section these are the thing next is paid cartage on 26 cartage paid cartage what is the amount 450 cartage will come and again under the cartage okay so these are the expenses uh, these are the remaining one we will do in the next class because it doesn't adjust here now see you have to what you have to do you have to total this one then you have to total all these things this 600 plus 400 thousand then this is 700 then this is 650 then this is 800 then this is 1100 then this is 1100 now you total this one this all things you total then this one also you total it then you check whether these total and these all total matches or not if it doesn't matches then you have missed out something then you have to deduct this amount from this amount then there will be your balance CD you will write balance CD here you will write balance CD and the whatever the balance you will write it and the total amount will remain 10,000 so here it will be 10 balance CD the amount will come here 10,000 the total amount will be 10,000 ok so balance CD will come in the payment section because payment cannot be more than the receipt Okay, so this is the pretty cash book for you. So with this, we end our class today here. And in the next class, we will do some more of pretty cash book. And then we will end our this cash book unit here only. After that, pretty cash book. Okay, till then, you practice more and more. Whatever you, is done in the class, please do practice. And we are always here for you to solve all your doubts. Till then, take care.